Welcome biologists, we are looking at specification point E from populations and sustainability 6.3.2 from the OCR specification for A-level biology. This is quite a lot of content so this video is going to be split into two so this is part one. So in part one we're going to be looking at the Masai Mara region in Kenya, the Tahari region in Nepal and also peat bogs and we'll cover the rest in the second video. Okay so we're looking here at the conflict between conservation and preservation and human needs of the area. So the wildlife population within Kenya has been heavily poached in the past due to them needing to make money for things like the coats and the rhino horns and the tusks on the elephants. So poaching has lowered the numbers of the animal population quite dramatically, especially for things like the rhino. Um, so what happened in this area is they employed park rangers and provided them with the necessary equipment that they need to do their patrols and discourage and prosecute poachers. Um, Elephants can also cause quite a lot of problems for farmers as they trample the crops. So farmers that are in or near those areas are encouraged to fence off the area to deter them from going near. They also do promote legal hunting of some overpopulated species only at certain times of the year, but none of the animals in that image there. The second area that we need to look at is the Hari region of Nepal. So we have beautiful forests here that support wildlife such as the Bengal tiger. But as you can see in this image here at the bottom, these forests are being cleared to make products, but also to create areas for farming. And to help combat this, what um, the government have done here is they've managed to have an alliance with other countries to increase the retail price of forestry products. This will lead to a greater economic input into the region and therefore hopefully they can leave some of the forest alone and um, they also promote a more sustainable wood fuel for those locals that do use wood again so they can leave the, the rainforest at, at, alone and they also promote fruits and veg from other areas so that the ones um so they don't need to clear any more area in order to grow their own fruit and vegetable um they also improve irrigation for crops when they do have to grow crops they've improved the irrigation because the soil quality has decreased um which crops do as you remove the nitrogen from the from the soil and don't replenish it so another thing that they've encouraged is uh, nitrogen fixing plants in these areas to replenish and increase the soil quality Okay, so peat bogs. Peat bogs are extracted and used for fertilizers on some plants and gardens. However, it takes thousands of years to form. They are very, fairly acidic and they can be used to preserve. So in the past, they have found bodies in there and uh, which have been used for studies in it to do with our history. But that's an idea of how long it takes to form these. And they also support some rare species of plants. So there's a couple of things that are done here to help encourage um, the peat bogs uh, for conservation. So they, they are, will remove large trees from the area or not allow any to be planted uh, because trees will obviously take quite a lot of water from the ground, which helps the bog. And um, they also prevent the grazing of sheep and cattle to, again, protect those rare species of plants that are there. So that's the first half of the specification point that we need to look at today. So those three that we've looked at, we need to make sure that we are understanding the, the, how the ecosystems can be managed to balance the conflict between conservation, preservation and human need. Okay, good luck guys in your exam. Remember, don't use the words it, they, amount or size. Use good biological terminology in your answers.